Hello and welcome to the video portion of the Winter Spruce Top DIY. I just want to kind of start going over um, some of the materials that you use so you can make a list of how you want to make your pot. Um, so we'll start with the leaf portion of the spruce top pot. These are magnolia leaves. Um, they're beautiful brown and green. I love them the most. Um, and then there is eucalyptus. These are really fun for a droopy look, all natural look of course too. And all of these are just suggestions. This is just to give you a feel for the materials and what you can use. Next is the Oregonia. It kind of looks like boxwood, but it's like a variegated leaf. Um, very pretty, very wintry, Christmassy. Again, really natural look to that as well. Um, the next item are eucalyptus pods. So eucalyptus pods are just the pods of eucalyptus. They smell like eucalyptus, but they're beautiful blue color and they kind of act as like a berry accent in your pot. And then we're going to go over the greens. So there is western red cedar. Um, this is a beautiful cedar. Smells wonderful. Um, usually this very chartreuse green brings out in your pot. And then there are incense cedar. And incense cedar is kind of like western red, but it has these cute little yellow tips, I guess, on them. I suppose they'd be considered their fruit structure. Um, again, smells wonderful. The next one is juniper. Um, juniper, of course, has the blue berries on it. I foraged for these at my parents' property, but you can find them pretty much anywhere um, just make sure that the, all the berries haven't fallen off. Next is going to be white pine. White pine is kind of your fluff or your filler in your pots. Um, try to look for some that have long branches like this, but we will be cutting it up into smaller sections. Next is red pine. Red pine has stiffer needles, um, but gives a really cool texture in pots. Again, is used as a filler. So those are kind of an example of all of your accent greens. Next, we have our spruce tips. So you can find bundles of spruce tips. I suggest finding some in different sizes and lengths. So this one is a little bit taller. Make sure that you have some shorter ones as well. If there aren't shorter ones in there, you're going to want to cut them shorter because you want different heights in your pot. Next are cones. So cones are really fun. This is a Jeffrey cone. Um, those are used as accents. You want to think hard about um, the size of your cones. So I would consider a Jeffrey cone to be a medium sized cone. And then there are what we call sugar cones next. These are your largest cone. If you have really big pots, then I would suggest using a larger cone such as a sugar cone. If your pot is a little smaller, I would suggest um, finding some smaller cones. So these are from white pine. And this is probably the easiest thing to forge for in the winter. Next are um, artificial. Of course, there's lots of artificial items. These are artificial berries. I happen to like the white and blue ones, so that's what I'm going to demonstrate with today. And then you can always forge for things. You know me, I'm foraging all the time. So this is just dried hydrangea off of a bush that I have, and I clipped those to use as a fun and different accent. Next are your branches. These are kind of fun. They're painted birch branches. I'm going to use these today because they are really good contrast with my house color. Um, also, I'm going to use the second one, curly willow branches. I love the orange in here and um, also looks nice with my shutters. So that's why I'm picking these. <laughs> but there are many other branches that you can pick from as well. Next is some dried eucalyptus. Um, this is dyed actually a blue color. You can find it dyed red as well. I've seen it even orange, um, but it's kind of fun. And then next are some natural pod birch round and dried mushrooms. So these are just some little accents that I've found. Um, maybe you would be able to find them to be in place of pine cones. Most of these items like this I found at garden centers. And then lastly are birch logs. So these are really fun, um, very rustic looking. When you're looking for birch logs, try to find different 
sizes in diameter and different sizes in length. Um, it will help your pot look more balanced. Next, we're gonna go over some tools. I have some clippers here. They're a bypass pruners. Um, you kind of need something more heavy duty like this for cutting greens because um, the stems can be pretty thick, especially on the spruce tips. And then I also have um, a little knife. Uh, the knife is just to break up the soil if you need to. Sometimes when your soil has already froze over, you need to use the knife to break it up a bit. Also, you'll want some gloves. Um, doesn't matter what kind, but maybe they need to keep you warm as well. But all this stuff is kind of pokey, so it's really nice to have some gloves on. Let's get started. So first, I'm going to start by putting um, some soil in. I put my soil in the garage so it wouldn't freeze, and I emptied all my pots. And um, just beware that if the soil is frozen, it's going to be really hard to spread stick the spruce tops into the soil. So either drag your pots into a heated garage or maybe into your basement, or do what I did and bring just the soil in so it doesn't freeze. Next, you're gonna wanna grab your spruce tips. Um, try to find the tallest one first. I'm gonna use five spruce tips in this pot and I'm grabbing the tallest one first and I'm just kind of clipping off kind of the dead icky branches on the bottom. And then I'm going to fluff it up really well and I'm going to stick mine towards the back of the pot. You can do the middle if you want this pot to be seen for um, 360 all the way around, but mine's going to be seen from one angle. So I'm going to put the tallest one towards the back. Next, I'm grabbing uh, another spruce tip, next size down, one just a bit shorter than the one I just put in fluffing it up and I'm just going to put it right next to the first one and I'm going to grab another one sort of of the same size, clip off the dead branches and stick it on the other side of the tallest spruce tip and fluffing as you go. Next I'm going to grab two shorter smaller spruce tips and one I'm going to put on the left front side and the last one on the right front side, just to fill in that hole. Next, I am taking some white pine, and as you can see, I cut it into smaller pieces, and this is going to be kind of like the fluff or the filler. And I'm just using these uh, mainly around the edge of the pot to hide any of the branches um, that are kind of unsightly, and it just kind of adds like this cute fluff at the bottom edge of your pot. And I also bring some up into the pot and kind of just blend them towards the top of the pot. And then I'm going to take my red pine and blend kind of the white pine in with the red pine. And see, I'm putting it a little bit taller just to draw your eye up with that different texture throughout the pot. Now next, I am grabbing some cedar and this is really fun for draping. Um, again, this can go towards the edge of your pot and here I am cutting it into smaller pieces. Cedar is one of those greens that is a little bit tougher um, to manipulate. So uh, my advice is to cut it into smaller pieces. You wanna cut into smaller pieces because if you get too long of a piece, it's just going to be sticking out and it's going to droop way more than you want it to. So here's kind of a close up of this cedar. And I am just sticking this around and you wanna kind of point it up and then it will droop down naturally. Um, make sure you are hitting the soil when you're putting these in uh, so they don't blow away during the winter months. Next, I am going to grab that blueberry juniper as an accent. And um, you can group this all together in one section uh, to make it more impactful, but I'm kind of spreading it around because I just want the little blueberries to look natural and like they're hanging off of the branch itself. And then I'm also gonna grab these incense cedar. It's kind of reminds me of the juniper a bit, and you can see how, um, how much contrast there is with the incense cedar. And again, I'm just sticking it just like I did with the other greens, and just using three small sections of it in keeping with design, you wanna use three or five pieces typically. Next, I am going to add in my curly willow branches. 
um, being sure that these are really getting down in the soil as well. Um, but you can also clip, feel free to clip them shorter if you want them tall. They're kind of fun and they're spiral, spiral towards the top. Um, but you can also clip them shorter. And then next I am using my white branches. I'm blending two different branches together. Um, a lot of people also like to use what is called dogwood. There's red twig dogwood and yellow twig dogwood. Um, people love using those together if you're interested in red or yellow. Um, it can be really pretty. But again, I just chose the white because it goes with my house. Next is your birch pole. So I am going to place mine kind of towards the middle back of the pot. I'm only going to use one. My pot is a little smaller, so I think one will do. Next, I am going to use the magnolia leaves. Um, now these, again, you want to do like sections of three or five. So I am going to do three pieces here, and I'm going to do one up higher, one off to one side, the right side, and one towards the front middle. And then next, I'm going to just add a little bit of the oregonia for an accent to the magnolia leaves. So I'm just kind of sticking them um, in the three places besides where the magnolia was. And next, I am grabbing my berries. These are artificial berries. And I'm just going to do one sprig of them kind of up towards the back. The whole time, we want to remember to make things look natural. And finally, I'm going to add my pine cone um so this is a jeffrey cone and so i'm just kind of showing that um another option i could put in like one hydrangea branch here if you have one big bloom like i do just use one or three little ones would be cute or as another option you could grab three pine cones and put them together and I actually think that that's what I'm going to do. I like the three smaller pine cones. So I'm going to take some wire and wire around the base of the pine cone. Watch out, the pine cones bite. <laughs> and I'm going to twist it. And I'm going to repeat this with all three pine cones until I have a wire on each one. And then I'm going to take the three wires from each pine cone and twist them together so that it looks like there's a group of three pine cones kind of hanging out together. Then I'm going to take a stick, or you could also, I just use a stick, but you could find something like a pick a little more professional. But anything that you can use just to stick down into the soil, and then see how my stick was kind of visible, I'm just going to take some greens and cover that up. So this could be, I could stop here. This could be a completed pot, um, but I'm just going to demonstrate kind of what the birch round would look like. Um, if you like a lot of things in your pot, feel free to add more. So here's the mushroom birch round and pod that I'm just going to demonstrate in here. Um, but sometimes they can look too busy if you add all of these things um, so keep in mind how much you want to add into yours and just think about the colors and kind of plan out how you want your pot to look um, of course my house has um, kind of a bluish gray color with white and brown accents so that's kind of why i chose the magnolia the blueberries the white birch branches and the birch log itself some people like theirs to look super Christmassy and they want to do the red. I like to keep mine a little natural just so that I can leave it up all winter long and not just for Christmas. That's what I love about winter pots so much is that they last all winter long. Um, I can't speak for anyone who lives in a warmer climate because it is possible that yours might dry up um, even before Christmas. Um, if you live in a state where it's warm the needles might fall off but here in minnesota those things freeze solid and they last all winter long and it's beautiful on the subject of taking care of your pots i wanted to talk about some helpful tips on the longevity of your pot so you can buy a product called wilt stop and you can spray um, your entire pot down with this um, you could also spray any garland or any greens that you have with wilt stop it's really going to help um, retain the moisture and help the greens hold on to their needles um, sometimes it's not necessary 
for people who live in colder climates to use wilt stop at all but using cedar at all i like to spray it on the cedar just because cedar has a tendency to dry out pretty quickly and it will turn brown um, so this wilt stop product can help you can also wet your pot but you don't have to continually water it um, here in Minnesota, it's going to freeze. Now, if you live in a warmer state, you may want to kind of give it a quote-unquote bath every day. It's kind of like your Christmas tree. It's going to take up water if it's in a warm environment, but if it's freezing at all or frozen outside, you do not need to continue to water your pot. So here I'm just flashing a bunch of pictures of pots that I've done in years past and when I worked at my greenhouse job. Um, you can make them any size or shape that you'd like and also i wanted to talk about um building some for indoors so if you're interested in building a miniature spruce top pot quote unquote for inside i would suggest you definitely can do it um, but you don't need to stick it in soil like you do outside so i would suggest finding um, a container that can hold water and you can either put floral foam in it if you like building it that way with more structure or you can just fill it with water and treat it as like a fresh flower arrangement but just use greens and um, all the same design concepts are applied, um, but you just do it on a smaller scale. So that completes uh, pretty much the video portion of our spruce top pot DIY. If you have any questions, feel free to message me or um, email me. I hope that you all have lots of fun building your pots and a very happy holidays to you.